Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Rogers and I'm going to be doing the session this evening on pet trailing. I'm just going to give this a minute or two because I know Facebook can take a little bit of time to kick in and let people know that I'm live. So if I am and you can hear me, if someone could put a little comment on to let me know that it's up and working, that would be fabulous. Otherwise, I will just introduce myself before we get started. So my name's Rachel Rogers. I am a clinical animal behaviorist and a full member of the APBC. I run my own clinical animal behavior company called Nose to Trail. Hence, we're doing a session this evening on pet trailing. So it's nose to trail, not nose to tail, which often causes a lot of confusion. So um, I've been working with dogs now for over 10 years. Um, I have a master's degree in animal behavior and welfare from Newcastle University. And I, um, I've spent a lot of time with rescue dogs. So I worked for the RSPCA, I've worked for Dogs Trust, and now I currently work for myself. And I'm a little bit obsessed with pet trailing. So I'd love to kind of spread the pet trail world and tell you a bit more about it. I do feel a little bit like an imposter because when it comes to being an expert, I am, well, I wouldn't consider myself to be the expert on pet trailing. So in the UK, there is only one pet trail trainer, accredited one, um, but we are in an unregulated industry, so we don't want to get into debates over what's accredited and what is qualified and that kind of thing. Um, but the lady who runs Pet Trailer UK, Becky Smith, she has spent over a year achieving her qualification, her pet trail training in Austria. And she is at present the only trainer that we have in the UK who does pet trailing as a like an official thing. Um, there are a lot of other kind of scent work things that you can do, scent work or nose work, however you want to call it. Um, but Becky's style is a bit different and it's the one that I send certainly my clinical animal behaviour clients to. But it's also the one that I obsessively go to with my own dog, Rico. So kind of understanding why we're going to talk about pet trailing this evening anyway is for me that so many of the dog sports dog activities dog training that i see people doing just doesn't use what is the dog's primary sense so dogs rely and see the world so much more through their noses than we tend to realize and i think that's mainly because as humans, our sense of smell just really isn't that good, okay? A dog's sense of smell is just incredible compared to ours. It's their primary sense, it's how they see the world. So to me, it makes perfect sense to use that in our training and to use it with our pet dogs a bit more because actually, if we know a little bit more about the dog's nose, how the dogs perceive the world, then I think sometimes we can just understand them a little bit better. So if any of you have ever kind of had a smell that reminds you of someone, maybe an aftershave or a perfume, okay, dogs do that all day, every day. The things that they are smelling evoke memories for them. They form good memories, bad memories with those smells. And that sometimes when we remember that can maybe make us understand a bit why sometimes they do things in their behavior that we can't necessarily understand. And, and their sense of smell is just, well, it's just so much better than ours that they can even smell things that we wouldn't understand, we, we can't perceive. So we know that dogs can smell hormones. We know that dogs can tell when we're sick. Well, I think most people have seen the incredible work with the COVID detection dogs that's been going on. Um, dogs can tell when you're pregnant. Dogs can sense our emotions and that's all through their sense of smell. So we need to really keep that in mind with when we're training dogs and just understanding dogs a bit better that their sense of smell is just incredible. And it's really important for me that we're dog centric in what we do. So when I'm doing training, there's no point in me doing things that rely on kind of shouting at dogs or using hand signals with dogs 
if they're seeing the world through their nose, I may as well tap into that and use that more to try and communicate with them than going against what is kind of natural for them. Okay, that's not to say dogs don't hear and dogs don't see, they do. Okay, but we can use that sense of smell for kind of so many different ways and so many different reasons. But if we look at kind of pet trailing in general, what is it? Okay, I don't know how many people know much about pet trailing who are watching. If you've done pet trailing before, please do pop in the comments and let me know because I'd love to find out about people's experience of pet trailing. But pet trailing is where we search for a missing, inverted commas, um, dog. So we will use a pet, um, primarily it's, it's dogs. Okay, in theory, you could use other animals, but it's dogs. And we have one which is the runner. So it's a stooge, it's a fake missing dog, okay, that we would then hide um, and then teach your dog to find by using their incredible sense of smell. So when we're doing that, it's basically like a giant game of hide and seek. Okay, so we are hiding a dog if it's pet trailing, a person if it's man trailing, um, and then we're training our dogs to seek out and find that missing person or animal. Um, Becky is unique, the lady at Pet Trailer UK, because hers is, as far as I know, the only one that is searching for kind of pet dogs um, in the UK using this method. But there are, you know, there's a lot of scent work that you can go to with your dogs, lots of, or nose work, if you want to call it that. And um, there are other organisations who do it, but my experiences and what I'll talk about today are based on her methods. Um, and how she does it, because that's what I know, that's what I've experienced, and that is what I think benefits the dogs in this way, so in especially for our behaviour cases. So I particularly like the kind of the pet trail style of trailing and training because it's really controlled. It's really well organised and set up, which means that it is completely approachable for anyone and any dog. So people with physical disabilities, dogs with physical disabilities, dogs with behavioural issues can all attend. Those reasons that might stop you going to a normal dog training class don't really apply for going pet trailing because it is set up for each individual dog and takes into consideration their needs and their potential problems or difficulties that they may have in a group setting. So when we do pet trailing, although we would have multiple dogs attending one session, we are only working and trailing one dog at a time. So if you've got a dog who is maybe really overexcited by dogs and they desperately want to go and say hi, and so they're pulling on the lead, okay, that's not going to be a problem because when we're doing your trail, there's only your dog out at that time. Okay, the other dogs are kept away. Um, and then we swap around and we have other goes with different dogs at different times. So you don't have that worry as an owner that you're gonna be ambushed by other people bringing dogs over, which I also particularly like. Um, and it does mean that if you've got dogs who have problems, if you want to call them that, with other dogs, they can still attend. So dogs who have to be muzzled, for example, in public places, dogs who, are muzzled maybe because there's always that little bit of worry that there might be an incident okay they're allowed to attend there's there's not going to be a situation because it is so well organized that puts your dog in a situation that is bad for them okay and that, that I think is one of my main reasons for really being passionate about it is because any dog can go and it's any dog of any age as well so any kind of temperament any breed doesn't have to be the dogs you particularly think of as being good with their noses. Okay, I my other dog is a Jack Russell cross pug. She is not what you would particularly think of as being a dog who would do scent work and using her nose a lot. But she's been, she had a go and she enjoyed it. She particularly enjoyed it, her reward and getting some hot dog sausage at the end. Um, so it, any dog, any age, any breed, okay, any person, don't feel like you can't come either because it's really low impact, all right? It's not like some of the other dog activities where you might be having a run around. If you don't need to run, it is low impact. And that, for me, 
because I see a lot of dogs who have chronic pain issues means that it's open to them too. So dogs who've got hip dysplasia, dogs who've got arthritis, they're welcome to join too. And the trainer is skilled to adapt the session to meet that dog's needs, which is just fabulous. So what we do is we lay a trail, which is where your runner, so the dog who is going to be missing, goes and hides. Okay, that's, that's kind of as much detail as we need to go into on how we actually set a trail. And then we get the dog who is going to be trailing. So the dog and handler team. So in my case, it's me and my boy Rico. And we show the dog a scent item, a scent article. And that can be a range of things. If we're doing a pet trail, that could be some fur, it could be some poo, it could be all sorts of things. But when we're doing trailing, it's that particular missing the runner's unique scent that we are finding. Okay, so it's a little bit different to some other types of kind of tracking work where a dog finds just humans and follows a human scent. It's discriminative. So it's about that individual smell is what they are following when they trail. So the dog gets pointed out to a scent article and then they set off and they follow the trail. Okay, it amazes people when they go the first time. I think they quite often think there is no way their dog is going to manage to do it. And they do. Okay, um, we, it's their natural abilities. The dogs, we're tapping into that. So it really is. They, they're so good at it naturally. So please don't think, oh, my dog couldn't do it. Your dog almost certainly can. Um, so again, that's another reason to just love it is that dogs succeed and certainly when I'm working with behavior clients that is something they really benefit from is seeing their dog succeed at something so if any of you are watching this and you've got a dog who you have you're having difficulties with that you know th there's problems um maybe those have come to light as lockdown restrictions have started to ease maybe they're not good with other dogs maybe they're a bit barky maybe they're not great with people okay sometimes it can, it can be really hard to have to own a dog like that so going to a session and seeing your dog succeed at something first time and seeing how much they enjoy it is so rewarding and it's so beneficial so it's really it's really lovely to see that and have that experience with your dog pet trailing does wonders for the owner dog bond it really does because you're doing it as a team okay the dog doesn't isn't let off and just goes and finds things of its own accord it's a partnership it's you and your dog working together um so in terms of kind of equipment that's another reason that it's great you don't need to go out and buy loads of swanky equipment okay if your dog has already worked walked on a harness you've probably got half of what you need so you need a harness and you need a long line okay i use a seven and a half meter long line and a thin leather one because i've got a teeny tiny dog but that's all you need OK, um, which is great because it, it's cheap and easily accessible. Once we've um, kind of shown the dog the scent article, that's what happens. They go off and you hold the lead and you follow them. You go together as a team. So. Um, so there's a question um, in the comments about does the handler of the dog know who know about the trail the hidden dog is or where the other dog or handler is or has it gone blind so the way that the trails work is that they are laid by the trainer so the trainer knows where you're going it's not what we would call a double blind okay the trainer knows so that helps us set the dogs up for success so if the dog was to go off the trail hugely you would be given advice and guidance and and becky's forever telling people slow down to slow down because we, we can get carried away and actually quite often the dogs are cracking on and doing it perfectly and it is us the human element of the lead that um kind of gets things wrong or worries so i'll give you an example um i have a dog who is a dog reactive dog client who who struggles with other dogs okay he he doesn't like them if they get too close he barks um he rears up on two legs Okay, so he was doing one of his trails, quite happily going along, following the, the scent trail, and his owner, so the handler, spotted another dog. Okay, just a member of the public out with their dog, not set up, not part of the training session. And so panicked because she assumed that her dog would see that dog and react. Okay, so she 
you know, gathers up the lead, panicking, oh no, can't let the dog too close. Okay, when actually, if she'd have just stayed calm, kind of took a deep breath and let the dog carry on doing his thing, because he was so focused on the scent trail, because that is their primary sense of, uh, their primary sense, sorry, he was doing that, he hadn't even noticed the visual of the dog coming over here. Now, no doubt he did smell it, but he was focusing on that smell, okay? He was off following that trail. His normal behaviours, the things that that owner was concerned about, weren't shown in that session, okay? And actually, it was really lovely. They messaged me um, after their first pet trail session to say that the two days following were some of the best dog walks they'd had with their dog. He was calm, he was relaxed, okay? And that that's, that is a common side effect of pet trailing. Your dog is tired afterwards. It is a mental workout. It's enrichment for them. It is more tiring for them to do some of these short trails and really be honed in on following a scent that actually that's more tiring than going for a really long walk for them. Okay, so I remember when I first took my boy a couple of years ago, he I mean he was quite young, he was quite lively, he liked to play, run around all the time. He was one of those dogs who would just always want good attention. Let's do something, mom, get up, let's do something. Um and he slept just on the sofa for two days he was shattered okay he really it was brain gymnastics for him he was exhausted afterwards which you know can be really nice for if you've got a dog who is a bit kind of all you know really excited and out there to have a way of kind of chilling them down a little bit can be really nice when they're doing trailing when they're doing any scent work it is all tapping into what is called the seeking system in the dogs so it is releasing dopamine, happy hormones for them. It's enjoyable, they like it, okay? The feel-good hormones are released, okay? But that seeking system is part of what makes it so rewarding for the dog. When we do trails, so we've got our dog on a harness, we've got our long line, we've introduced the scent article and they're going to find this missing dog. Um, they, they, they do get a reward at the end. So when they found the stooge missing dog, the handler themselves will give a reward and rewards the dog. But that whole trailing process is just as rewarding for the dog as the actual food reward that we may think of as in a more traditional training style of being a positive reinforcement. We're giving them some food afterwards because they've been successful. That actual kind of seeking, that's rewarding in itself, in itself sorry. So to give you kind of a comparison for humans, and we don't, use the seeking system as much as dogs but if you remember when you're a kid and you're um doing like an easter egg hunt and you're you find an easter egg you don't just find one and then go and eat that easter egg you keep going it's that kind of search and that excitement of oh where are they where am i going to find them that's the seeking aspect okay and that's what they're doing when they're following that trail um so that is just just as rewarding as getting your hot dogs or whatever you give when you find the stooge, the missing, the runner person or dog. Um, have we got any more questions? I don't think there's any more questions. So I'll I'll just keep talking about, uh, about pet trailing if, if there's no questions. But if anyone's got any questions on kind of how they get involved or anything, please do pop them in. I'm more than happy to kind of answer those. That's absolutely fine. Um, there's a comment higher up actually saying that someone has hounds and their nose game is strong. Yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Some some dogs really, they use their nose a lot anyway. So if they're using their nose when you're out and about, give them a job, okay? Give their nose a little job to do and funnel that into something productive because it's great. I really enjoy watching the different breeds of dogs and the different dogs that we have when they're trailing because they all do it in different ways. So it's not um, just your dogs who look like out of a cartoon where their nose is glued to the floor um, and they're sniffing along like this. Okay, they don't all do that. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's not working or that the dog isn't doing it. It's just how they're scenting, how they're bringing the smell in. Um, my boy walks just looks like he's walking, which made it quite hard for me to know at first if he was on the trail or if he'd gone off and got it wrong. Um, because he doesn't put his nose down and look like he's following, he just walks. Okay, but he gives me a really big clue with his body language when he's getting really close to the runner because he almost starts twerking. His whole body goes wriggly, wriggly, and he gets so excited because the scent is getting stronger. He knows he's right, so he gets really excited. 
and then he you know goes around the corner and finds whoever's missing and he absolutely loves so um where is pet trailing base so pet trailing at the minute um is in loads of different locations and um, as we speak and as we do this um becky at pet trailer uk is down south doing some um she is the only pet trailer trainer in the uk at present but there will be more sadly covid has kind of slowed things down a little bit because um like i mentioned at the very beginning the training was done in austria based on the search and rescue knowledge of a group of individuals who combined it all um i think they've got kind of decades worth of experience together to produce the method that is used and the style of trailing that is done um but until we have more trained up trainers um because marcus who is pet trailer himself he can't get over at the minute because of all of the issues with covid and um, they are kind of you've got like a week in the southwest a week in the west and they kind of move around but on bex's website so pet trailer uk uh pet trailer .co uk sorry um if you put in your location you'll be able to find the nearest ones and um, i know she is back in the northwest in the coming week um so there should be some not too far apart from you okay so um are they using a mixture of brown scent and essence? Yes. So this is there's a bit of a difference between trailing and tracking. Okay. So trailing, which is what is done in pet trails, is I like to think of it as a bit more free for the dogs. Okay. So they they have a bit more freedom. So when a dog is tracking, they are often following like a human kind of originally chosen by humans so say you've got um like vegetation so ground that's been trampled on they might kind of hone in and say oh the suspect say has gone that way because there's disturbance and they'll send a dog off that way and it's usually following just that particular track rather than a unique scent profile for that individual so there's higher scent discrimination in trailing and yes, it's ground and air scent. Um, and that's why it is more, I think it's freer for the dogs because when a dog is trailing, if they're going along and they're following say the ground scent, but then they get a whiff on the air of a fresher scent from over here, okay? Coming from a different direction, they can deviate off, okay? So they can go and they can deviate off and they can find where it is. Um, so it is a little bit different. Okay, um, so in terms of the difference between working trials, um, I think of these things being kind of less competitive. So pet trailing is about you and your dog having a bond and having an activity to do together as a partnership. Um, there is, in, in theory, there's assessments that you can take, but they're for your like individual dog to achieve something. Um, and it is a giant game of hide and seek. It is not as controlled. There's no like wearing of white gloves and laying out cloths or anything like that. It is, it is quite different to some of the other types of scent work that people do. Um, but yeah, there's there are so many different things. And that's not to say that other bits of scent work wouldn't benefit dogs. They probably would. Um, I just particularly enjoy the pet trail side of things because of how calm and relaxed and how the sessions are set up um so if we look at kind of from the human side of things the benefits that i see for the owners are that they're going to somewhere where you are in a in a, a safe space okay most of the other dogs who are there are going to be dogs who have similar kind of maybe issues or you know where people have had those bad experiences where the, the very friendly dog comes running over to your on lead dog um, and it, it's a bit of a challenge for you to handle that doesn't happen um so that that can be really like helpful to have that controlled setting with like-minded individuals that you're going to and um, i see that bond developing between the human and the dog which is really nice but the other thing that I see is that my owners, so the clients who go, 
develop really good body language awareness in their dogs because in order to tell whether the dog is following the trail or not they have to learn their dog's individual tells that they do um on the trails and so they're starting to pay more attention to their dog than maybe they have done previously a lot of us watch our dogs and say oh they're cute and get our phones out and take pictures of them sleeping and when they're doing different things around the house but not that many of us certainly as pet dogs dog owners just watch our dogs and know their own unique little things that they do when they're happy or when they're a little bit worried um, and that can be hard sometimes with a dog on lead because if you're following it with the harness down the middle of its back you're seeing its back of its head and its ears its tail but you might not see its face um, and loads of the information you can find on dog body language is about kind of what is their mouth doing what are their eyes doing? And you can't see that when you're behind them. So it really does help people to develop body language skills that maybe they didn't have before. Are there any other questions in the chat box? I don't think there is at the minute. Okay, so um, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the other stuff that I do with nose work then. So, um, I call it nose work rather than scent work, but that's because I think the nose is doing the work, not the scent. And uh, the dog's nose is fabulous. Um, but, you know, they are used interchangeably. So if you're looking for things to do, use the terms nose work and scent work and you'll you'll find more if you if you search for both terms. Um, so I do an online course with my clients as well for nose work. Um, and that that's open to everyone. It's not just my behavior clients. And that, again, is to help teach the dogs and um, how to really use their amazing noses. And we start with really basic stuff that a lot of people probably already do with their dogs. So a lot of people will scatter feed as enrichment and some people will play like a game like find it. And so I start usually with my clients with fine tuning a find it um, and picking one particular food source to give them that is going to be the the scent that we are fine tuning it with um, and we start in the house so that they have less distractions so again if you've got a dog who wouldn't be suitable for group classes that's why some of the scent work stuff is really accessible because you can start at home you don't have to worry about being in a room with others um, and then they learn the skills and techniques to take it out and do it out and about so for dogs who maybe struggle with um kind of when they first get somewhere they're quite excited maybe a bit frustrated and pulling on the lead having that kind of in your skill set as something to do can be quite nice so you can drive somewhere new and exciting when you've had that kind of prior experience of thinking oh my dog's going to be a nightmare when i open the boot and i get them out of the car you can get out and you can set that up in advance um, so you can use your your little thing, bit of food that you've used for your um, find it training in the house. So just something really basic like cheese and you practice it in the house and then you can take it out on your walk. So you could stick it on your own car. You could stick it on a fence. You could stick it on a tree before you even get the dog out of the car. And then you can give them their cue to go and find it. And straight away, you're getting that nose into work. <laughs> and getting them doing that instead of that oh where are we going i'm so excited and pulling on the lead so i find it can be really calming for dogs to introduce that in the house and then take it outside it's also quite good if you've got dogs who can't go out for whatever reason um so i don't know where everyone's watching from i think someone just said they're over in mexico so it might be even hotter there than it's been here but it's been too hot to take our dogs on walks in the middle of the day so scent work can be a really good thing as an activity for when it isn't appropriate to be walking your dogs. OK, so when you think, oh, they need a little break, they need something to do. Maybe you need a break from doing working from home and being on the computer all day. You can just get up and do a little bit of that with them so you can go into one of your rooms, hide some bits around for them to find and then let the dog in and let them sniff out and find all the goodies that you've put in. OK, and that doesn't need to be that they are getting extra calories and that you're worried about them getting chunky because you can do that with their normal food as well um, but you can also take that out of their food allowance so if you would normally give them a certain amount in the morning but you're thinking oh 
too hot to walk today. I'm going to end up using some cheese or some hot dog to take some of their food out to, to balance it out. So it's not going to be that we end up with loads of chunky dogs because we've been using food to train them. Um, when I use food, that's what we call an active find. So it's something the dog gets to at their eating or chewing. So you can use toys as well, um, but they actively get to be involved with it when they found it. You can then go on to doing a bit more serious stuff. You can do what we call like passive finds um, where you put them onto a different scent and that would be something you wouldn't then have them um, eating or chewing or digging at when they find it. Um, and certainly I had the privilege of doing some training with the fabulous Louise Wilson at Conservation Canine Consultancy. Okay, and she trains her dogs using the same techniques, um, but to find kind of things related to conservation, great crested newts. Um, I think she's away at the minute doing some pine marten scat hunting. Okay, searches for those. You can't be having a dog that would then put that in its mouth. Okay, so passive searches are really important, and that's where the dog would indicate that they had made a find, um, and that can look very different depending on the dog and how it's trained some of them will put their nose up against something and stay there and say it's here and um, others will sit it really depends on how it's trained but it's more your active finds if you want to be doing some scent work in the house um, and taking it out and about on your walks something really basic like cheap mild cheddar cheese can be used for that really easily um, and yeah if you want to do your pet trailing then that is all about kind of finding someone to lay the trails for you. So finding a session you can go to, okay? Because it isn't just as simple as getting your friend to walk around a corner and hide with the dog. Okay? It's a bit more complicated than that. But if you're looking at getting into it with your dog for fun, you don't need to know the ins and outs and the science behind how it, the trails are laid. Okay, if you're really keen or if you're a trainer or behaviorist who's watching this, um, then do have a look because there's going to be a new course on being one of the people who can lay the trails. Okay, so you, you can get involved in that if that's something that's really excited you and you think, oh, I could, I could do that too. And um, you can, when COVID allows, there will be an instructor course um, and all the information about that is over on Becky's website. But if you're a pet dog owner and you're looking for a fun hobby to do that might keep your dog entertained, give their nose a job and just give you some quality time to spend with your dog doing something a bit different and helping you to get that lovely bond with them then I certainly recommend getting involved with it and at least having a little go you might not become addicted but I have to say I think it is one of those things that once you've done it once you end up going back so I apologize in advance for anybody who becomes as obsessed as I am and spends a lot of time going around the country doing trails but it is such good fun and your dogs will love it if there's any last questions please do put them in the chat box i haven't seen any for a while but that doesn't mean that that isn't any it might just mean that my thing has frozen and um, but i certainly haven't seen any for a while i'll just wait a second or two in case there are any more ones that come up Okay, so I can't see any more questions coming in, but I will check back. So if you're watching it on the replay, um, if you add comments on as well, I will keep popping back on and have a look at those in case anybody has got anything else that they want to ask if they're watching it back. Um, if you want to find out more, then by all means, you can pop me a message and find me at nose to trail um, or you can find Bex at Pet Trailer UK. Um, are there any groups doing this in the Netherlands? I'm really sorry, Emma. I don't know. Um, it's not somewhere that I've been. Um, what I will do is I will um, tag Becky in that afterwards and see if her or Marcus, who, Mr. Pet Trailer, um, know if, if there are any. Um, and if they do, I'm sure they'll they'll hop on and send you a link to any. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been really nice to get to share something that I think more people need to be doing. OK, and I'm just really glad that pet trailing has come to the UK and that 
we we've been able to be involved in it um and that we've got more of it going on so keep a look out for sessions near you i'd love to see you there and um, i'm quite happy to hide with my dog rico for other people to find um so you never know it could be me hid on an industrial estate for you or in the middle of the countryside somewhere we'll just see where i end up but if you've got any questions pop them in the comments we'll get back to you on them and happy trailing